This video is sponsored by King of Card Fight. For more information on tournaments, deck lists, or setting up your own King of Card Fight tournament at your locals, go to kingofcardfight.com. Hello again, friends. Today I'm going to do something a little bit different and go over my thoughts of the current Vanguard restriction list and fighters rules to discuss what my predictions are for the future of the list. I will start by reviewing the current list, then I will discuss which cards may or may not leave the list in the near future, and which cards may or may not enter or re-enter the list in the near future. The interesting thing about the fighters rules and restriction lists are that the English version of the game hasn't seen all of the same restrictions as the Japanese version of the game. Conversely, any time a card has been banned in English, it was also banned in Japan prior to that. Let's start with the cards on the Japanese restricted list and fighters rules. We have Barkle and Lizard Soldier Conroe being restricted as starters. Epitome of Knowledge Sylvest cannot be used at all due to its own card effect more so than its inclusion on the restricted list. Cat Butler and Flash Ripple Odysseus are restricted to only two copies each in any deck. And finally, while not a restriction in the strictest sense, Jewel Knight Sword Me may only be played in a deck in which you have one or more grade 3s, and all of those grade 3s are Jewel Knights. This is a fighter's rule more than a restriction, as Jewel Knight Sword Me isn't limited at all when you play it. Continuing on, we have the English version of the restricted list and fighter's rules. The only difference is that Cat Butler is not on our restricted list. When the restricted list was originally implemented to include cards that weren't Barkle, we didn't get any of their restrictions. That held true all the way until Lizard Soldier Conroe was restricted from being a starting vanguard. Let's move on to some particular cards on the list and discuss whether or not we'll be seeing them ever potentially be removed. Starting with the original restriction, we have Barkle. Many cries of hashtag free Barkle have been heard across the years. Some would argue that a while ago he would have been perfectly fine to unban. However, there are several issues with Barkle being unbanned that transcend his direct impact on the game itself, even though his direct impact would be game-shattering. To begin with, the original reason why Barkle was hit was due to Royals solidifying themselves as the strongest set 2 deck, and nothing until set 5 was even really that close to it, other than maybe Tsukuyomi. Fourth, Lu added in the ability to never be grade-locked on grade 1. You could even be grade-locked at 0, ride a grade 1 the following turn, and still ride up to grade 2 on turn 2 with Barkle. It simply isn't fair to have a 100% anti-grade locking mechanic for a clan and not give it to other clans. Fifth, it could flood units from the deck for free with absolutely no negative repercussions. The fact that they were 5k boosters made no real difference at the time, especially since Barkle could rest himself behind Alfred and Alfred didn't care that he wasn't being boosted because he can't be boosted. So that was why Barkle was hit. And as I'm sure most of my viewers know, the current state of the game is not healthy for Barkle to return due to similar principles of brokenness occurring from the soul building for Thingsaver and the size zero field flooding for Sanctuary Guard. These are the primary reasons why if Barkle ever does come back, it won't be until Sanctuary Guard and Thingsaver become hopelessly obsolete. I'll give you a second to cringe about what that would take. Long story short, I don't think Barkle will ever come off the restricted list. Moving on, we have Lizard Soldier Conroe. Conroe being in Kagero, one of the main character clans, and one of the most heavily supported clans, has meant that it has been continually oozing in utility. Originally, it could grab Bars for Power, Kimnaras for Retirement, Perfect Guards for Defense. That's already crazy good. Add in every single Grade 1 or less Kagero and Cray Elemental that's ever been printed, and well, this card is just dumb. The reason why Conroe got hit was due to Novel Vague. With a Grade 4 being something that needed to be ridden over a Grade 3, consistency was supposed to be iffy at best. Well, Conroe had the ability to grab a particular Grade 1 support card for Novel Vague, which allowed you to trade Vague in for a Grade 3 and that made your chances of riding up effectively the same as any other standard deck, so then Novel Vague ended up being a very big problem for both the English and Japanese metagame. This was the final straw that broke the camel's back for Bushiroad, and they decided to axe Conroe for good. Due to the fact that it gets stronger every single time Kagero and Cray Elemental get support, I don't foresee it ever returning to the game as a starter. Next, we have Cat Butler. Cat Butler is the only card on the Japanese list that isn't on the English list. The primary reason for this is due to Bushiroad switching support around. We ended up getting Nova Grapplers at the tail end of our Legion support, so the Terror of Cat Butler Legion format was mitigated pretty heavily for us. In Japan, Cat Butler Risers was the first Legion support that they got outside of the Trial decks. Also, Stride wasn't known about when Japan got Cat Butler Risers, but it was known about for us by the time we got them. And Legion was no longer going to be the primary mechanic for the game, as it lasted all of five sets, three of which were effectively extra boosters. Thus, the Cat Butler restriction was a necessity in Japan, but not in the English metagame. Do I think that Cat Butler will ever be restricted in the English metagame? Probably not. Do I think that it will be unrestricted in Japan? Probably not. 
Unrestricting cards gives them attention, and I'm pretty sure Bushiro just wants to forget about this insane interaction to begin with. But it's also not a big problem in the English metagame because we didn't oversaturate our meta with it. Moving on, we have Flash Triple Odysseus. This is actually an interesting topic to cover because I could actually see this going either way. Was the problem with Odysseus his consistency? Was the problem the grade 2 game that he enabled? Was the problem the deck thin and milling mechanics? With such a ridiculous card, it's pretty hard to tell what the core issue is with it. That being said, with the introduction of Air Element Seabreeze and validating a large portion of the grade 2 game, many of the facets that made Odysseus unbearable to play against have been remedied. That being said, if I had to guess as to whether or not the card will be restricted or unrestricted, I would have to guess that it probably won't. Ripples were an overpowered budget build. Only the older cards cost more than 25 cents a piece outside of maybe the stride. Unless Bushiroad gives them triple R or generation rare support, which they won't, I don't see them letting this card off the restricted list since they'd rather have people buying more product for the more expensive cards. Also, to be frank, the community has a pretty harsh stigma against Ripples, and most people wouldn't want to see them come back at full power, even with Seabreeze as a countermeasure against the Grade 2 game that they played. Next up is Commander Laurel. Commander Laurel is on and off the restricted list very frequently. He typically leaves the restriction list about a set and a half before Dimension Police gets support in a set, and then he's added back onto the list about a set and a half after they get support. Fancy that. As Dimension Police is getting support next set, and it's shaping up to be pretty solid, I imagine we'll be seeing him back on the list very soon, especially since Perfect Guard Gs cannot guard swings into rear guards. Rounding out my list, we have Tidal Assault. Bushiroad is keeping their eyes on it. This card is honestly completely bonkers. Multiple attacks post grade 3 aren't as problematic to deal with, because you have an 11k base vanguard and you can guard with all of the cards in your hand. But imagine being a 6-7k defense grade 1, unable to guard with half of the cards in your hand, and one or more of these things are going for your face. Tidal Assault is the reason why over 90% of first turn kills happen. I have personally won a game on my first turn attacking when they nullified my vanguard's attack because I had two of these bad boys on the field and I hit a critical trigger. That was literally all it took. That being said, this card being restricted is going to depend completely on how Japan chooses to play the game. If Aqua Force becomes problematic and if this card is at the root of those lists, then it will get hit. If Aqua Force can't compete with the other clans, it will stay. Essentially, it is a ticking time bomb, waiting for Aqua Force to get strong so it can explode and get hit. I would wager that if G Regulation becomes a primary format for the game, that this card will be hit. That concludes my analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I missed something? Because I probably did. Feel free to comment about it. We can spark a pretty in-depth discussion about this topic, and I encourage it. That's all I have for now. Have a good one.